Tammy C. Walker here. Have you ever had your eyes focused on the prize? You were trying to hit that end goal and they counted you out. But the first question of the hour is, who in the world is they? If you stick around to my video, you will see that they don't even count. Let's go. Find something you cannot afford to pay for. Tap into it. Tammy C. Walker and I am back. Welcome back with me. And if you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe and everyone please hit that like button for me. Again, this video is about when they count you out. My channel is called Dreams Are a Reality because they truly are, but it's all about what you believe. Often we are on the edge of our breakthrough, we are about to hit a goal, we are making great strides, and someone will count us out. But we have to say, who in the world are they? One thing about a go-getter, someone that's a goal seeker, and someone that will reach their goal, they walk around with blinders on, they don't care what you say about them, come hook or crook, it could be their own mother. They will not care because they are so focused on that end goal, they don't see anyone. They will step on your head to get to where they need to be. And that's the kind of tenacity needed to get a goal um, or reach a goal. So who are they and what do they do? For an example, you are about to start your own business and you have told quite a few people, which is sometimes the ultimate no-no. Because when you do tell others about your dream, they become envious or jealous or their fear kicks in. Maybe they wanted to start their own bakery and because you had the gumption to do it, here comes the question, well, how are you going to do that? And often I want you to pay attention to voice um, pitch. When you have a dream and you're working on it and it's just big and beautiful, you know you're gonna you know you're gonna reach your goal. So you never have to worry about people. But I'm just showing you how they can be. They'll say maybe their voice is soprano. They all go to a tenor. Well, how are you gonna do that? Well, um, well, how where where are you getting the money from? Well, I knew a friend that tried to open up a restaurant. It didn't work. You know you have to tune out the noise. That's just one of my statements. I always say shut out the noise to get to where you need to be you cannot be bothered you know you just have to be not bothered something happened um yesterday where devin booker was beat out um, from the slam dunk contest and that's all that they're talking about on twitter devin booker got robbed devin booker got robbed well okay let's see is he robbed did he really get robbed this guy is a young guy very good basketball player and he's making a heck of a lot of money to do something he loves maybe he did lose the um slam dunk contest or whatever but did he really get robbed and i think i'm saying the wrong person it's not Devin booker i think it's aaron i'm sorry i gotta get my facts straight but um i mean we keep doing this jennifer hudson oh jennifer hudson she she lost american idol she was i think she came in seventh place but look at her she's like Got this amazing career, Grammys and all this other stuff. Who are they? Why are they counting you out? When people say you're not the best singer, you still do your, your music. You put your CD out. You put your album out. And you may not win American Idol, but you just may win a Grammy. You know, let's see. American Idol, down. Grammy, up. You won. You won. So you have to block out they. Let's just say... You want to be married. You're in your 40s. And here comes the people with the noise. You know, um, it's hard out here. You may not really find anyone. I had someone say stuff like this. It's hard out here. You may not find anyone. You know what? I live in Chicago, outside of Chicago. 2.7 million people. So you got to tell me there's no chance in snowball hell that Tammy Sharice Walker would ever meet a guy and mind you i never had trouble meeting a guy and i'm not bragging i'm not saying it in a brag bragocious way i'm just saying with my personality i'm real outgoing 
And I just, that's just something I never had trouble. Guys often talk to me, and I'm not talking about only in romantic settings. They'll talk to me because I'm kind of friendly. So I don't have that kind of trouble. So don't do that. If, you have, if you've had a bad relationship or bad experience dating, and I truly have had, not the best, I, no, it hasn't been good. But that doesn't mean I'm going to, you know, damn it to damnation and say, I'll never meet anyone else. Or I'll, I don't think like that. We can't think like that. When they count you out, you go on two more dates. What about you know that you want this promotion, but you're not quite qualified, but you're professional, you're punctual, you're a team player, you're ambitious, you always try to learn more than you need to know. Apply for the promotion. When they say, oh, you're probably not going to get it, you just might get it. So this is why you can't let them count you out. i never forget buying my first house. And me and my ex-husband, we had a small budget. I didn't make a lot of money. I think I was an administrative assistant at the time. This was in 95, 1995. He was a bus driver for the Chicago Transit Authority, also known as CTA. But he worked part time, so maybe 25, 30 hours. So our two incomes combined, it wasn't that much. It was okay, but it didn't qualify for a big mortgage. But we qualified because we had good credit. I was told, you're never going to find a brick house for that budget. We end up with a two bedroom brick house. When they count you out, you keep going, you keep doing what you know that you are going to succeed at. You cannot listen to the chatter. They're going to talk. My sister, God bless my sister. I have the best sisters. I, I just think I just think my sisters are just freaking amazing. I am the middle child. I have one 51. I'm 49. I have one 41. And she told me, she was like, oh, I sent you a book. I'm like, what in the world kind of book? What did she send to me? I didn't know. So Amazon delivers it today on Sunday. And she knows, anybody that knows me, I'm a huge sports fan Def definitely football and basketball basketball the most and i love derrick rose i'll show you that's what this book is i'll show you now i followed the bulls from the 80s and 90s and i kind of fell off maybe after michael left so 03 04 maybe something around somewhere around there. i stopped watching as much but this little kid he pops back in from Inglewood. Inglewood is on the south side of Chicago. I'm from the west side. Both sides have very tough pockets. And Derrick Rose is from Inglewood as well as Jennifer Hudson. Those communities can be very um, impoverished and dangerous. You know, a lot of gun violence and drugs. Same as the west side. But this kid made it. Went to Simeon. Simeon, for those of you that don't know, is the high school where Ben Wilson came from. Superb basketball player that was gunned down. And I hope I'm getting my facts straight. 1984, he um, was walking down the street on the south side of Chicago, bumped into a guy, and some words were exchanged. He got shot in the groin. He died. It's a top-tier um, high school basketball player. For sure would have been in the NBA. So um, that story, I was 14 when that happened. Oh, God, it ripped me to the core. It was a very sad time, very sad. So Derrick Rose went to the high school with Ben... Um, I hope I didn't say the wrong name, Wilson. I hope I didn't say Simmons. Oh, God. Forgive me if I'm getting my facts wrong. Ben Wilson. Benji is what we called him, too. So, Derrick Rose went on to Memphis for college. And guess who recruited him number one in the draft pick? Uh, Chicago's own, the Bulls. So, it was like a rejuvenation for the Bulls. And to have Derrick there. Then we ended up with Jimmy Butler. Joe Kim Noah, Luol Dang. We had Tom Thibodeau as the coach. We were making it to the playoffs. And it was almost like the Bulls of old when we kept getting stopped by the Pistons, where our new nemesis was that dog on LeBron James and the, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. We could not get past Cleveland. And that was always our nemesis. Um, but it was exciting times, exciting. So I lived for the Bulls. And then one unfaithful day I'm watching and Derrick Rose goes down grimacing and he tore his uh, ACL. This when it started. This was in 2011. But prior to that, this kid was the youngest MVP, 22-year-old MVP. His dunks were amazing. His ball handles were sick. 
his speed, they couldn't do anything with Derrick Rose because his speeds were sick. But when I would watch him, me and my ex, we would say, that kid going to hurt himself because he dribbles real low to the ground. He used to. And he would bend his knees real weird. He was wild. It looked like maybe like street ball. And we could just watch his form. And, and my ex kept saying, Tammy, that kid going to hurt those knees. And we, we, you know, we're athletes. I play tennis. And he plays more sports than me. So... We, we le you learn about the physical body and movements when you are any type of athlete. It doesn't matter if you're amateur or, you know, professional. You use your body to play that sport, so you become very aware. And sure enough, he, he tore his knee, and he came back, and then it happened again, and then something else. You know, he, oh God, it was to the point where I couldn't even hardly watch Derrick Rose play because I was scared he would get hurt. It just spiraled out of control. He was scared to play. He was clear to play. He didn't want to play. The coach, Tom Thibodeau, was like, come on, Derek, you got to play. It was just, it became this big volley. The city started to turn their back on him. But what bothered me the most were I would be on social media and they would be like, ha, 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 he's made a glass. Oh, he's probably going to hurt his knee. What is he going to do? Turn into a glass. I mean, I, you know, I'm not a goody to show you all. I do stuff. I don't get on social media and bash people. But to laugh at somebody's injuries, that's some sick stuff. I just, I don't see the humor in it. You know, at the end of the day, any athlete can tear a knee, uh, tear an ACL, an ankle, uh, break a wrist. Steph Curry, you know, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving is very injury prone. Um, the late great Kobe Bryant, he tore his ACL. I mean, it's such a quick injury. It can happen to anybody. But why would we laugh at anybody that hurts themselves? How's that funny? And then if it keeps reoccurring, it's really funny? Like, that's crazy. So long story short, everyone's fortune tellers. You know, when you injure yourself, they can tell you when your career is over. Uh, and, and they wrote them off. That's what they do. You get written off. When when you make a bad decision or you have an injury, you get written off. You're never going to amount to nothing. You'll never play again. Blah, blah, blah. Derrick Rose had a 50-point game last year. 50 points. He was just emotional, crying, you know. And I, I was so happy for him. So happy. Because what they don't talk about is Derrick Rose has paid for funerals of kids that were killed by stray bullets. This man takes money out of his pocket and pays for their funeral. Of course he's got the money, but don't a lot of other people have it? They don't do it. This guy, he holds a shopping spree for several kids where they can go into um, the Adidas store and buy what they want. I mean, just gives back, gives back, constantly giving back. He's an introvert, as his book states. I already started reading. It's a very good book. He's got very good reviews. He's very honest. And uh, I'm very impressed. I'm so proud of Derek. I think I feel like he's my nephew. He doesn't know me, but he he huh, he's my nephew. And again, he's a sweetheart. He's a low key, introverted, quiet, humble guy. Humble. And he was written off. And this guy is now playing for the Pistons, and he is killing it. He's back. Like he said, I matured. I had to change my game up. And I don't play all wow, but he he's doing it. So when they count you out, I'll show you. Go back to Derrick Rose. I'll show you. Don't let nobody count you out. No, without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to make it. No, without a shadow of a doubt, you're in goal. And write it down. I keep talking about this. I write down the same goals over and over. And I write it down for a year, maybe even two same goal until I get to it. And when I get to it, I highlight it. When I get to it, I cross it out. When I get to it, sometimes a little tear come down because I'm proud of myself and I want you to be proud of yourself. And when they count you out, use that as fuel. Use that as fire. I love for somebody to say something to me. It just, I take it and make it a positive. And I'll, you know, you piss me off. I hate the job anyway. When I get home, I'm on the computer sending out 10 resumes. If you tell me I can't do something, I'll spend 14,000 hours knowing that I can. Not to prove you wrong, but to go for what I believe in. So again, hit subscribe, hit like. Tell me about maybe a time they counted you out and how you sustained.
what did you do to get to that end goal? Hey, do you want to cop this book? This is a good book. I think you would enjoy it. And, you know, have that Derrick Rose intensity. Even when you tear something emotionally, you tear something, maybe you have a mental breakdown. Maybe, you, you know, God forbid you lose somebody or your finances are torn. No matter what you tear, say, I'll show you and come back and come back better than before. Don't let them tell you what you cannot do when you know without a shadow of a doubt you can. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.